This is a CJSR podcast. Volunteer powered. Listener supported. Campus and community. Radio. Podcast. Podcast. Radio. Radio Radio and and podcast. podcast. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I got a couple goes at this too, right? If I botch the first one? Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Hi, we're That's Food, and you're listening to CJSR special Fun Drive episode. That's Food is a podcast from CJSR, Edmonton's campus and community radio station, handmade with love by University of Alberta students and community members, telling the backstory of the food in Edmonton, one meal at a time. We've got a lot planned for this hour of That's Food, including a breakfast sandwich bake-off where Melania, Kimberly, and Sophie fought against the clock to make their favorite breakfast sandwich. We also have a blind coffee tasting to find out which coffee at U of A is the best. The results will shock you. Fun Drive is CJSR's annual fundraiser. Every year, we rely on our listeners to pledge their support for CJSR. If you love what we do, please donate to our annual fundraising event, Fun Drive. This year, our goal is to raise $100,000 to support all the cool, independent radio that we broadcast every day. There's tons of cool swag, including the Friends of CGSR discount card. For $30, you can get discounts to over 60 rad stores in and around Edmonton. You can donate online at cgsr.com or dial 780-492-2577, extension 0. Stay tuned for more. This episode is brought to you by the That's Food team. Twenty-five seconds, guys. I got. What? No. She got distracted. <laughs> oh no! Uh oh! Oh, fridge butter's not spreading. Okay, welcome to Saturday morning brunch, everyone. Sandwich wars begin. Melania looks like she's ready. I'm ready. She's ready to win this whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready to win. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we got the energy and the feisty Kimberly in the bottom right corner of my screen who's ready now too. Oh, oh I just got apron. pulling out the apron. I got the apron and everything. Wow. She's serious about this. That's when you know she's serious. All right. Let's see what everyone's ingredients are. What do you have there, Sophie? Um, I only have one egg, so okay. hopefully that's enough. But um, we have the essentials. The most important is the sriracha. Oh yeah, you gotta add some spice to that whole thing. You know that it's hot just gonna fieriness. Be sriracha. It's just gonna be a sriracha sandwich. A sriracha sandwich. My goodness. <laughs> <That's insane. laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna splatter the bread and sriracha and it's gonna be really good yeah. nice how about you kimberly what do you got there all right i got some freezer bread because we can't get through a loaf of bread without it going bad in our house <laughs> got some organic eggs because we get spud delivery still i have a mostly good green onion one bell pepper teeny tiny some uh, cheese curds because we don't have regular cheese anymore and then I don't usually use sriracha. I use either like tapatio or Belizean heat, which you get in Belize when you go. Mary Sharp, she's a lovely lady. Yes, shout out. <laughs> shout out to Mary Sharp makes the hottest hot sauce I have ever encountered in my entire life. Okay, Beautiful. that's also going to be a feisty little sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's bringing the heat today, you know, quite literally bringing the heat. <laughs> And last but not least, Melania, what do we have? Um, so today, since we uh, started later, I went to the bakery by my house. Shout out Empress Bakery, it's so good. And I got the last farm bread rye. So that's mostly what my sandwich is gonna be is the bread. Um, but I also, I was thinking of doing two maybe because the first one has honey and cottage cheese and that's it. <laughs> and then I was thinking maybe of doing 
like a fried egg one. Um, so maybe combining them together. Hey, I don't know if that's cheating because Melania is going for two sandwiches. So this is a okay. Sorry, I can there's competition. <laughs> oh, I think that's good. I mean, hey, cottage cheese and honey. That's the first for me. I've never ever heard of that. So I kind of want to see both now. Yeah. <laughs> But, but, but everyone has 10 minutes, so yeah. if you can make two in 10 minutes, all the power to you. Remember yeah, it. I mean, that, <laughs> it's not that quality, or it's not quantity, it's quality. Okay, it's 10 minutes, right? Are we ready? I don't know. Set. I'm so stressed out. <laughs> Contestants ready. Set. Go. Okay, Woo. and we're off. Nice. Sveta showing us the 10-minute timer. And uh, yeah, our contestants are now hard at work. Sophie's got butter in the pan. Kimberly is starting to put some eggs into a bowl. That's a nice, good start always. Already got some shells in it. Do it all. <laughs> hey, well, adding Melania's a bit of crunch, you know? Yeah. Oh, Melania, you're going with a different approach. Nice. Buttering up the bread, always a nice thing to do first. Honey. Honey. This should be interesting. Honey and cottage and cottage cheese. Um, yeah, I wonder how that's going to work out. I wish you guys could try it out. Oh, I know that's the thing. That'd be so much, so much fun <laughs> trying them out. Hey, Sophie's whipping up some eggs. An egg, probably. <laughs> what egg? She's really fast, really fast. She's super zoned in, adding the milk now as well. And uh, right now, it looks like Melania is still working on that cottage cheese. I'm done. That's the first sandwich. Are you done? Yeah. Is this a sandwich, though? It's I mean, like a loaf. It's a slice. Hey, of bread. it's a slice. Of, yeah, it's a slice of bread. <laughs> The bare minimum. Okay. I mean, the important thing is, is, does it taste good? Yeah, I think so. I feel that raises an important question. Must a sandwich have two slices of bread? And must it be toasted? I mean, what is the definition of a sandwich? I don't know. It's a good question, actually. Google Dictionary states, a sandwich is an item of food consisting of two pieces of bread with meat, cheese, or other filling between them eaten as a light meal. Wikipedia says a sandwich is a food typically consisting of vegetables, sliced cheese or meat, placed on or between slices of bread, or more generally any dish when bread serves as a container or wrapper for another food type. So technically, according to Wikipedia, Melania, you have a sandwich there. Yay. According to Google, you do not have a sandwich. So who's <laughs> <laughs> Honey and cottage cheese for sure is a must try, I think. Interesting combination. Hey, Sophie and Kimberly both just got some pepper in their eggs, similar techniques. So Sophie added butter to the pan and has been gradually adding ingredients right into the pan, whereas Kimberly has been putting everything in a bowl and whisking that together right now. Yeah, I noticed that too. I mean, hey, what do you think, Saveta? Which way would you want to go? Pan first or just in the bowl? Well, you know, the lazy in me says dump everything in a pan. Why dirty a bowl? But then the perfectionist in me says, you want to control every component and time it right. So go with the bowl first. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, it's interesting. Both good, both decent techniques. I mean, hey, you can go either way, either way. Like you said, the lazy in you or the professional in you. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> All right, everyone, we have five minutes and 13 seconds left. I'll give you a five minute warning. Oof, time is going by fast, guys. <laughs> five minute warning. Okay, Kimberly's got her ingredients in a pan. She's cooking away. Butter. I'm just spreading. That's the butter. butter. <laughs> oh, that's okay. That's okay. You know, it's a very important butter. step. It's a very important step. You're good, Kimberly. You're good. Yes. Guys, I am kind of stressed out. Um, I have just put an egg, cracked an egg in the pan, but I don't know if I'll make it in time. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. You have three and a half minutes left. Crank up that heat. Crank I know. <laughs> But don't crank it up too much. We don't want you to burn those eggs. Have some toast. Are we buttering that toast though? Yes, butter on everything. Perfect, yes. That is the correct answer. 
Sophie's eggs are still cooking away. She's slowly using, slowly, slowly working on those eggs for sure. So they're going to be slow cooked and creamy. Ooh. They're very liquidy. Kim's eggs might not very be. Very liquidy. <laughs> this might not work. Might yeah. Work. Hey, you got to crank up that heat then, maybe. Kimberly, do we have our eggs in the pan yet? Yeah, eggs are in the pan. Fantastic. Oh, she's whipping out some micro greens, it seems like. Arugula, what is that? Fancy. Uh, baby spring mix. My goodness. Baby spring mix. I'm picking out Interesting. The <laughs> I'm picking out the beet greens and the spinach because I don't want those. We're just going five star <laughs> chef level over here with Kimberly. <laughs> She's going to elevate that sandwich. You know, you just cannot have a simple sandwich in a competition like this. You got to elevate that sandwich. I'm not hearing a lot of trash talk between the competitors. It looks like it's a very tame battle. They're just going to battle it out with their sandwiches. That's all. Right. I have secret ingredient. Do you guys know what this is? Is that truffle? No. <laughs> oh. Okay, you can't really tell. It's more, it's a beet. Uh, yeah, I was going to say it looked like a beet, but I was, uh, I was like, maybe not. Maybe she's just trying to trick us. <laughs> so you're putting a beet on your fried egg sandwich. I don't know. I've never had this before. Ooh, that's she's awesome. risking it all for the biscuit, you know? Yeah. You want your like pickled beets? I have pickled jalapeno. Ooh. You know that's that. going to go well. Inspiration, maybe? Mm -hmm. Wink, wink. Okay, so interesting observation also. All three contestants have used cheese for their breakfast. Sophie, I believe, had a... I think I, put, she, I saw her put cheese. Kimberly's got cheese curd, and Melania made a cottage cheese and honey sandwich. We're dairy heavy today. Cheese is such a classic breakfast ingredient. You don't have to cook it, or you can cook it. It's filling. Okay. And hey, you get that nice cheese pull. It's always a nice thing. Mm. Oh, these are my homemade pickled jalapenos. Homemade. <laughs> oh, we're we're getting to that level. Okay. <laughs> I guess the time constraint. You know, the last few minutes, you you're gonna have oh to start whipping out those risks. Twenty five seconds, guys. I got. What? No. She got distracted. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Uh-oh. My move, fridge move. butter's not spreading. What a surprise. No one could have foreseen this. My um, sincerest apologies. I feel like I let the team down. Maybe we should add one minute or 30 uh, seconds. Let's add 30 seconds. 30 seconds? Okay. We're adding 30 seconds to you guys. Oh, thanks. And your time. Great. So use those 30 seconds wisely. Egg is coming off the pan. Egg is actually a good fried egg from my side. Melania is low-key just hyping herself up right now. Okay, you can't, can't. can't see it right now. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. 20 seconds. And the countdown begins, guys. Remember, everything has to be on that plate by the end of the time. And hands Otherwise, off. it won't count. And hands off. Yes, hands off always. Don't forget to put those finishing touches. We oh. eat with our eyes first, everybody. <laughs> So janky. <laughs> I'm done. done. Stop. Stop right now. Hands up, guys. Hands up. All right. All right. You gotta right, see right. those hands. Good job, guys. You made it to the end of the time. Yay. Yay. But how have your sandwiches fared? That is what we're going to find out. And cut to break. Advertisements. Intermission. <laughs> Who will win this challenge? Melania? Sophie? Or Kimberly. Stay tuned to find out. Why should you support CJSR this fun drive? In addition to the widest variety of music on any Edmonton radio station, CJSR is the only place you can find syndicated spoken word programs like Democracy Now!, Counterspin, and Alternative Radio, as well as our own local community news shows and podcasts like What's the Cheese Miss, Gay Wire, and That's Food. We have a number of programs that serve Edmonton's cultural communities, we provide coverage to the city's arts groups, and we tackle social issues that no one else touches. CJSR is Edmonton's community radio station, and now we're asking for the community to support us. If you believe in what we do, give us a call at 492-2577, extension 0, or donate online at cjsr.com. Again, that's 492-2577, extension 0, or www.cjsr.com.
But how have your sandwiches fared? That is what we're going to find out. We see Kimberly still working away at something. Oh, over no. There. We're just spreading <laughs> the fridge water. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Okay, so first up is Kimberly. Looks like we've got some greens there and open face sandwich. So we can see the contents. Nice buttering. Hot sauce right beside it. Interesting. This would be something I would eat. I, I find I could find this in a good restaurant for sure. Kimberly, I like it. I like it. I finished it off. Uh, because we got homemade pickled jalapenos on uh, one of the competitions. I got mm -hmm. my, my mom's wild foraged home pickled fiddleheads. Oh, because <laughs> that's the kind of family I come from. <laughs> stepping up, stepping it up. What would you call this sandwich, Kimberly? If you were to put uh, a name to it. This is an omelet sandwich. An omelet sandwich? Okay, okay. Simple name. I like it. I like it. Sometimes the best things come in the simplest names for sure. Okay, who's up next? Uh, well, I see Melania is ready, poised with, looks like three <laughs> instead of two now. Okay. Well, this is the egg one. I don't really want to put it on top because it's going to just not rack. Actually, yep. I can do that for you guys. Oh, how well. You can see the egg yolk. Very artistic. You can see that egg yolk. Yeah. <laughs> Very colorful as, as well. Yeah. And this is the cottage cheese one. Um, so we've got the main dish and then we've got the dessert. Yes. That's a hearty meal right there. Mm. And is sure. that a big slice of tomato I see on the egg sandwich? Yes, very thick. Expertly sliced. Classic. Nice. <laughs> and what would you what would you name your sandwich, Melania? Um, I would name it just I guess like old food in the fridge. Old food in the fridge. <laughs> But for sure, amazing, nice. And then Sophie, looks like you're the last one up. Yes, this is my sandwich. <laughs> Very pretty. It looks so good. Now this that is what we call plating skills to the finest. Now, did you toast that bread or is it untoasted? It is, I don't like toasted bread. Oh goodness. But... <laughs> Slightly. Sophie, the, the I think setting... you just, I think you just offended <laughs> Savetta right there. <laughs> the setting on the toaster is like, you know how it's like one, two, th it's like half to one. It's just like not toasted. It's, it's warm. Like barely toasted. Yeah. No, it's a warm. It's starting to get those bread. crisp lines and maybe just yeah. barely getting them in there. It's warm bread. Yes. Warm bread. So let's see. Did you add um, cheese in here as well? Um, it's in. So the egg is underneath um, the greens and the there's a lot of sriracha. And what are the greens? Is that avocado? Um, no, no, it is not a avocado. It is greens that I found in the fridge. <laughs> From the depths of the fridge, that's a solid strategy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and what would you name your sandwich, Sophie? A uh, warm egg sandwich. A warm egg. Warm sandwich. egg sandwich. Oh, everyone stuck with simple names, you know. Descriptive. All right, everyone. Why don't you try your sandwiches and give your own personal reviews? Be honest now. <laughs> it looks like Melania just dove right into that uh, cottage cheese and honey one. Kimberly and Sophie have also taken a bite. Now let's see. We'll give you guys a couple seconds to just like chew. Uh, no, I mean, Melania just stuck out the <laughs> thumbs up. So she's, she's going right for it. Yeah, it's, mine's good. I think it's mostly due to the bread though, because it's fresh bread from today. And then I'm never going to start talking talking about it it's so good um so yeah mine's good i like it the bread is the star of the dish sounds mm -hmm. like sounds sounds good kimberly what are your thoughts on your first bite of your sandwich gonna be honest jealousy got the better of me fiddleheads are not good in this <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna pick them out I, it looks like melania was successful in swaying swaying you to the dark side there very subtle melania very subtle all a part of my master plan. All a part of it. And then Sophie, how about you? Your first bite, what was that like? Um, I'm going to be honest. I don't usually like toasted bread, but this would have been better if it was more toasted. And I can see Savetta in the bottom. <laughs> She's just agreeing with you right there. A big shake of the, a big nod of the head, sorry. I am so glad you see the light, Sophie. I am happy to welcome you over to the light side. Yeah, I feel like I could have toasted it more, but... It is what it is now. <laughs> well, congratulations, contestants. You win 
a breakfast sandwich. Melania's just Yay! taking photos of her own already. <laughs> it looks so good in the light. Sorry. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I'm just in awe of this yoke. It's so beautiful. <laughs> okay, I'm torn about this. Okay, so obviously runny yoke is where it's at, hands down. But I genuinely have an issue with putting a yunny, runny yolk egg in a sandwich or a burger because as soon as you take a bite, the yolk bursts and all of it just spills out. You don't actually get to eat the yolk. Yeah, see, I, I don't like doing that either. Yeah. <laughs> I usually, if I'm going to eat yolk I'm on, on bread, I'm just going to use one slice of bread and then like kind of eat the yolk first and then eat the rest. I just Absolutely. cannot, I just can't have yolk on my plate at all. Same. I have like almost OCD. I cannot yeah. allow even a drop of yolk to waste. So do you yeah. eat the yolk first with another slice of bread, like kind of dunk into the yolk as a thing? Yeah. I love sometimes sometimes I do that yeah um it's either that or I kind of like just suck the yolk out because oh. <laughs> I, I like yolk I mean the yolk tastes fine when it's cooked it's just like uh I, mm -hmm. I can't let it spill that's a even like if there's a crumb on my plate I have to eat that crumb too that's just how I am with food <laughs> yeah my go-to breakfast on, breakfast is actually a slice of bread with copious amounts of butter and then a fried egg which is super crispy along the edges and a runny yolk in the middle and then I use a knife and a fork to eat around the yolk yeah. and that final bite is that bread butter bread and this full yolk one bite it sucks when it dries on the plate though <clears throat> I no, that's the like, thing I, I mean like yeah, exactly <laughs> well that was fun actually I'm, I'm glad we did this CJSR's oh, first honor. virtual online cooking competition with no winners <laughs> I mean, hey, you guys gave your honest reviews, so <laughs> we're all winners. Good idea. Using a wooden spoon to check if oil is ready to fry with. Bad idea. I'm trying to put out a gas fire with water when you forgot to check on your oil. Good idea. Putting salt in a pot of water to make it boil faster and season the pasta. Bad idea. Forgetting you've left a pot of water to boil until your roommate reminds you. Good idea. Supporting CGSR's unique and endearing programming by going to cgsr.com slash donate or texting 780-492-2577. Bad idea. Texting a phone number that only has a landline. This has been Susie from That's Food and thanks for listening to CGSR. Melania here, That's Food Podcast producer and also coffee lover um, for our next segment. So that's and I tried coffees from Cookies by George, Daily Grind, Tim Hortons, and Dewey's in a blind taste test. Yes, Dewey's does have coffee. So let's go see which is the best coffee on campus. Okay, so I'm going to taste the first one. Um, this is really up close and personal. Delicious. This one tastes really watery, but it is quite smooth. I guess, um, Sabeta, you want to try? Okay. I'll give the first one a shot as well. Ah, yes, it is quite watery. It has a mild flavor. Very smooth, and I wonder if it's smooth just because it's more water than coffee. We'll see. Okay, okay so that was the first one. Um, I'm going to take a sip from the second one. Well, the first one is much smoother. This one is much more bitter. Um, watery base wise, I think this one, it might be stronger actually, I don't know. You wanna try? Taking a sip of the second one, color wise, you know, the second one does seem to have a deeper color. Very, very subtle difference though. I mean, two could get, might think it's the same thing. An entirely different flavor profile. It almost has like um, subtle flavors of a berry. I want to say maybe like blueberry. Slightly more bitter, a deeper flavor. Like this is a fruity coffee, I would say. 
compared to number one. Oh my gosh, we have a real life expert in the midst. <laughs> I, I, I can't even tell. I mean, it is like a little more bitter and like more coffee tasting than the first one. The first one kind of tasted like a little bit like tea, you know? That's, that's how weak it was. Um, anyways, I think we're ready for number three. Mmm, uh, okay. this one is definitely my least favorite so far. Um, it's just like, tastes like bad coffee. Um, I guess, Sebastian, you want to try? <laughs> All right, number three. Okay, so number three compared to number one and two has, I don't know, like a murkier tinge. One and two are very clear liquids. Well, clear for coffee, um, but three is kind of murky. Yeah, weird stuff. Yeah, some kind of film. It could be high oil content from the bean, ideally. Let's take a sip. bitter more bitter than one and two for sure and i really just pick up more bitter so it has more flavor than number one number one honestly compared to two and three has no flavor <laughs> um three would be more bitter nose and then two so far is my favorite because it keeps me guessing like i want to say it has a berry flavor or something yeah, I would agree that number two is definitely my favorite so far. Um, but we still have number four. <laughs> Let's see how this one. Okay, um, and this one also kind of has a film on it. Um, and they didn't fill it up. Like, compared to the other ones, they didn't fill this one up a lot. Okay, I'm going to try some. Um, very interesting. Pretty bitter. I think it's kind of the same level of bitterness as number three. Um, it is also the coldest, so <laughs> it's not the best. Do you want to try? So yes, agreed with Melania. It also has some kind of a film. I mean, it could be that it's the oils, but also it could be the cup itself. Maybe the plastic has melted. <laughs> no one wants that. Or who knows, the pot that they brewed the coffee into is not the cleanest. Now I am starting to question this film. Nonetheless, student life, you drink it all. Okay, so this has more, okay, more bitter than one and probably three. I think I find two and four have a more complex flavor, more than just, you know, that dark, bitter liquid that we associate with coffee. But just because the flavor is more complex doesn't mean it's better. The contender, contenders are four and two. I'm going to take another sip of two. Oh, actually, you know... I feel like they're the same. Okay, I took a sip of both. Two has an immediate flavor right at the tip of the tongue. Oh, flo now, two versus four, four is bland. I don't like four, I like two. <laughs> now let me try two versus four. Yeah, it is kind of fruity. Number two, interesting. And then, Oh yeah, two is way better. But I think this one kind of has like nutty flavors. Maybe. Maybe not. Anyways, which one's your favorite? All right, I'm going to try and rank these. Oh, okay. So <laughs> we've got two and four in one, num position one and two. We'll decide right now. And let's compare three, three and one. Three is just bitter. And one tastes like nothing. I would not bother with one ever. I wouldn't even get the... Uh, the placebo effect of caffeine in this one so that's a hard no um i guess number four then number so sorry fourth place last place number three is second place and then f testing four and two one last time they are pretty fruity so this is the kind of coffee if you drank it black you'd enjoy it actually you really don't need sugar and cream because there is a flavor in there both are okay i would say two is first place and then Four is second place. What about you, Melania? I think number two is definitely number one. And then number, like the first one we had was number fourth, like in the worst one. But now I'm going to try between the last two ones and see which ones are in t second and third, respectively. 
Okay, I think number, this one was number in third, right? So number three, I actually kind of like, and I'm gonna put that in second place. And then number, the last one that we tried, I'm putting that in third place. Um, so are we ready for the grand reveal? <laughs> okay, so the first one that we, I guess like starting from fourth place, the first one that we tried, okay, this is kind of confusing if you're still <laughs> listening and you know which one we're talking about. <laughs> you deserve eight one star. That was Tim Hortons. Yep. <laughs> Tim Hortons is the sh coffee. <laughs> oh, I, am I can I am I allowed to say that on radio? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> Tim Hortons is the shittiest coffee. Not worth your money. It's also the cheapest. <laughs> but I would also not recommend that. Like maybe get an espresso shot or something from Tim Hortons. Not like the straight up coffee. And then the second one that we tried, which was our favorite, is actually from Dewey's. Are you surprised? Because <laughs> I know I am. Um, that one is also the most expensive. So that was 368. So I guess if you're really ready to splash out on some black coffee, they also had a lot of different stuff to add in your coffee. So very good uh, experience. It was also dead when I went. But anyways, um, the third place, I mean, so the third one we tried, which I gave second place and you gave third place, is by Cookies by George. So yeah, middle range. And then the last one that we tried is by Daily Grind. So yeah, that's it for you. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this, listening to this. So I guess it holds true. The more money you spend, the better quality you get. Dewey's is the most expensive and it ranked number one. And Tim Hortons is the cheapest and it ranked last. Um, but I guess the decision is yours. Do you want something that tastes good for a coffee? Or do you just want that caffeine boost? Thanks for following along. <laughs> And there you have it. The best coffee on campus is from, drumroll please, Dewey's. Are you surprised? Because I am. Thank you so much, Savetta, for trying. And then also, thank you so much for Susie for recording. On to the next segment. All the programming you hear on CGSR is produced by volunteer community members. This makes CGSR unique. It's radio for the community, programmed by the community. If you believe in what we do, give us a call at 780-492-2577, extension 0, or donate online at www.cgsr.com. And that brings us to our last bonus segment of this year's Fun Drive episode. Up next is a special reissue of our first episode ever as That's Food. This episode is all about the mystery of the morning meal. Originally produced in 2019 by Kyla Wong, a That's Food alumna, who set out to discover the how and why of breakfast. Don't forget to call and donate during this hour to support the making of innovative community radio here in Edmonton. That's call to donate at 780-492-492. 2577 extension 0. That's 780 492 2577 extension 0. I come from a big bread family, so like toast on toast on toast, probably with maybe a different item you can toast. Um, maybe some egg, maybe some cereal, but like toast, toast, and toast. I'm Sophia Yang. And I'm Kyla Wong. And you're listening to That's Food from CJSR, revealing the best story to Edmonton's food, one meal at a time. So today, we'll be talking about serial killers. Um, 
Isn't this podcast about food? 93% of Canadian households are serial killers. That's pretty bananas. Exactly. And do you know when serial killers and their associates are most active? Um, I think I know this one. What better time is there than at breakfast? Yeah, I've always thought of breakfast as a very important meal, if not the most important. But when I asked around, I got some other interesting opinions. So I invited three students from the University of Alberta to come talk about what breakfast looks like to them, to see if we could get to the bottom of this mystery. My name is Evan Armstrong. I am a first-year education student at the U of A. Uh, I used to work in radio, so I'm familiar with kind of the CS- C- CJSR environment, and I really enjoy a lot of the different things they do. I am also a big music fan and like to hang out with people of the world as much as I can. Love meeting new people. My name is Mackenzie Walker. If I could do everything in my life in an Excel spreadsheet, I would. Uh, by day, I'm in the Bachelor of Commerce program, getting my after degree in accounting, and at night, I use my kinesiology degree to either coach basketball or play rugby. Hi, my name is Bria Wong. Um, I'm a fourth year student is studying business. Um, I love the intersection of business and social change, and I think having the hiccups is an absolute blast, and I don't understand why people complain about it. Breakfast, to me, is a chore. It's something that I feel like I should do, but I don't really want to. And because it doesn't necessarily have a huge effect on my day, if I plan accordingly, it's something I'm very okay with skipping a lot of the time. Not someone that feels a real need for breakfast. Not someone that especially enjoys breakfast on a day-to-day basis. If I have nowhere to go, I'll definitely spend a little bit more time kind of making myself a really nice breakfast because then I can eat it later as well when I'm actually hungry, like at 10 or 11. But if it's just a regular day where I breakfast is the thing between me and the rest of the day, I don't view it as like a nice thing because I want to get to my rest of the day. I mean, I love breakfast. I'm an unconventional breakfast eater. So if it was up to me, I would be constantly just making like not your everyday unconventional breakfasts. Lasagna, best breakfast ever. I don't consider breakfast a chore. I consider breakfast dishes a chore. And that's more what like drives me away from putting the time and effort into it. But I don't know. I love breakfast. I love making breakfast. I love eating breakfast. I just love breakfast. I'm not a huge breakfast person. And mostly because I feel like the majority of the digestive things I'm feeling in the morning is actually my body asking for water and staying hydrated. Um, So I definitely start out the first couple hours of my day when I'm awake just drinking lots of water. I like to try and drink a whole liter of water before I start eating food. Um, And then usually I have just kind of an earlier, bigger lunch. Um, sometimes I'll have breakfasty foods with my lunch, or sometimes my lunch is just an assortment of snacks. Breakfast for me growing up was very much like when I was younger, my mom would make me breakfast. Uh, when I was a little, like a really young kid, probably till I was about four or so, my mom just like gave me bottles for breakfast. I was still using bottles at age four, maybe a little like old to do that but my mom was just like hey it's easy and make some happy so that was that and kind of from then on it was just like a rotation of I'd probably do something new every month or two for breakfast it was probably cereal for a couple months and then toast with peanut butter and honey for a couple months and it would just kind of slowly rotate between three or four different things um yeah and it was just kind of the thing you did before you went to school I come from a big bread family, so like toast on toast on toast, probably with maybe a different item you can toast, Um, maybe some egg, maybe some cereal, but like toast, toast and toast. With the chaos of school and with the way everything went down, usually my sister and I were eating breakfast at the same time in the morning, but... My mom was off busy getting something ready for school or something ready for our lunches. And my dad kind of basically rolled out of bed, went straight to work. So it was like definitely something my sister and I did together, but it wasn't necessarily like a big family event. Uh, I have a lot of memories of 
just kind of growing up, going to school, and uh, me and my sister sitting down and eating uh, breakfast together, whether it being like porridge or cereal, um, maybe occasionally eggs or pancakes on special days. But um, I feel like you're pretty standard North American fare that you see of in TV shows and movies. How would you rank breakfast, lunch, and dinner in order of importance and why? I, For me, in my brain, dinner is probably the meal I place the most stress on just because it's the one I eat the most of. It's definitely the meal that it's like if you were to look at portion sizes for each of my meals, dinner would be the one that's the biggest. And then probably after that lunch with breakfast being the smallest, but I know theoretically it should be the other way around i don't really care though i feel like i just kind of almost graze until dinner hits like i'll eat a little bit of breakfast and then i'll eat some lunch and then maybe i'll eat a little bit more at about three or so because i'll be a little bit hungrier around then and then once dinner hits that's when like i eat my big meal that'll kind of keep me going for the rest of the day and yeah, that's just, in my mind, it's like, that's when you eat. Is just, that's when I eat all my major food. Get all the food groups in at dinner. A little less essential to get them all in at the other meals. Breakfast is, like, number one. If you can see my hands, like, I'd be reaching above my head way up there. Then I'd say dinner. Then I'd say lunch. Um, for me, it's just, like, breakfast sets the pace of your day. It sets you off to start your day. There are so many important things that come from breakfast, and especially from like a physiological perspective. Breakfast is what your body needs to get going. You've just spent all night not consuming any energy, and you're about to go do a bunch of things. Like You need something to sustain that. I mean, dinner is important, too, because I think it's kind of like the ending of the day. It's one of your bigger meals, so it's important you prioritize that. And then lunch, to me, it's how you choose it. It can be small. It can be snacking throughout the day. Everyone's on the go. Everyone's schedule is different. Coffee is typically the star of most people's mornings. Something that's warm gets them going, gets them ready for their day, and they often overlook the importance of putting food in their diet. They haven't really done anything. They haven't really ever. They're not worried about it. And because you're worried about being late for work or late for school or meeting the different things you have, you're not taking the time to realize what breakfast can do for you. I am. I was definitely a coffee drinker, and I would almost say that 70% of the liquid I took in was coffee. Um, just throughout the last, I'd say a couple years, but more specifically the last like four months, um, I was put in situations where I was having to be very physically active in the morning, or um, there was just like a lot of movement and things going on in my day, and I was starting to notice I was getting a lot more physically ill with coffee. I was getting the shakes I was getting an upset stomach. I was experiencing a lot of problems. So I've been having to wean off coffee, which is a very weird experience for me, and be very strategic in how I choose to drink co- drink coffee, which I think also was why I always want to make sure, even if it's not a super sustaining breakfast, I have breakfast because I know that I'll get sick if I have coffee or tea or something, which I'm not ready to give up that moment in my life yet. So I need to put something in my system to make sure I'm going to be okay. I think my first, the first most important meal would be lunch, just because for me that is my first meal of the day, and that um, I've already gotten work done, um, and and now it's just like I'm actually at the point where my body genuinely is asking for more nutrition, asking for more calories, and so to kind of actually properly fuel my body as it is calling for. Um, So I that's why I'd say lunch is number one, and then I think my next most important would definitely be dinner. Um, Again, because dinner is kind of unavoidable and you've had a full day and you've been doing things so your body needs stuff to refuel and to build and to heal and then as well I feel like dinner is just uh the easiest meal to do communally and to share and to gather with friends and family around a table and hang out and um I really value that and so dinner therefore is a um a meal I really enjoy to have especially with others and then breakfast if not obviously is ranked third because I don't partake in it super often or I just combine it with lunch so when did you stop like when did you decide to stop having breakfast in the mornings I about two years ago and initially 
One of the things I enjoy, like I just find the area of nutrition and health uh, super fascinating. And that's something like I enjoy watching or reading and just consuming on my own. Um, And so I think I was learning more about this concept of intermittent fasting and just the three meals a day, how as normalized as it is, it's not necessarily the only way or the best way that we can structure how we consume and intake food. And so learning more about that was super interesting as it just kind of opened, expanded that box of what meals look like. And then even my schedule at that time was I would, I wasn't going to school until midday and I was there until late at night and so it was almost it was easier for me to uh just have one big meal early on just before I leave and then not have to pack any food to school and then have another meal by the time I came home and so it was both um coming from head knowledge that I was learning but also efficiency sake and what made sense with my schedule. So you mentioned intermittent intermittent fasting. Could you explain what that is? So intermittent fasting is the idea of actually giving your body and your digestive tract a break. Um, this has been largely corroded by the snack culture that we have um, and the idea of constantly consuming food um so if you think about let's say like you go back to the 50s you know you have dinner at like six or five and then you don't have breakfast till the next like eight hour like 8 a.m the next day and it's just like that's what like 15 hours where your body's not actually digesting any food and it kind of has a break and um that they i i'm no expert i study business this isn't my field major but it allows by giving your body time to digest the food that it's had. Um, and once it's done that, it's able to switch into another function, which um, allows you to like heal. It also trains your body to use up energy stores it already naturally has. And I think it also helps you to better understand the signs and signals your body is giving you. So like what I mentioned earlier, a lot of times when you think you're hungry, you may actually just be thirsty and being able to distinguish if you're thirsty or hungry. Also not being scared of that feeling of being hungry because fortunately enough, most people in the first world um, don't actually aren't at risk for um, malnutrition or from starvation. And so being comfortable with, hey, maybe my stomach's not stuffed full, but it's also not empty and I'm, I'm not at risk right now and not fearfully consuming food either. Just being very intentional of what you're putting in your body. I think it definitely has made me more conscientious on uh, what I'm consuming because first off, um, in the morning, I'm not just rushing to have some sort of food because I'm obliged to have food. Like, I have several hours to actually, like, I know I'm not eating yet so I can have, have time to plan and, like, have a better first meal versus I'm running out the door, I'll just grab, like, um... I'll grab a cookie off the counter because at least it's something. So I feel like I've, I'm not eating just because I'm not, I'm eating healthier. Um, But I also, I'm not like stringent on following this. Like if I'm out with friends, like camping for a weekend, like I'm going to have breakfast with everyone else. Like this isn't something that's do or die for me. It's just, if I have a choice, this is what I'll opt for. But um, as soon as it's really inconvenient and not really practical for my lifestyle, then I'm happy to adapt. So what do you think in comparison to lunch and dinner that there's such a variation uh, from person to person in how we each do breakfast? I'm going to give two reasons. The first one is I think you get a big variation between morning people and non-morning people. I would think morning people are probably more open and excited about the idea of breakfast because that's when they have their energy. That's maybe when their like creativity is most active and they're like, oh, I could try this for breakfast today or that for breakfast today. And as well, just different awarenesses and emphases on people's like personal health, like people that are really motivated on being healthy in a very conventional sense are probably going to put a lot of emphasis on breakfast and make sure they're eating a really healthy breakfast. They're going to have their two over easy eggs and their green smoothie and that's going to be their breakfast somebody like myself i try to maintain being healthy but not necessarily like a calorie counting way just like a make sure i'm not eating crazy amounts and making sure i'm eating the right foods kind of way 
a lot more casually. I just generally don't worry about breakfast because I know that I can compensate for it in other ways. Growing up, I was notorious for getting sick in the morning. I would wake up sick. I'd feel gross. I'd feel whatever. And it was almost to the point I couldn't eat breakfast, like the idea of eating food. And then I'd be going through my day and I'd be really struggling. And so it taught me a value of breakfast that I don't think that I would have gotten without that experience. Like it taught me to just check in with my body, see what I need and understand that like it's telling me something. So I guess that's also where my passion comes in as well as like I've known people who faint. I come from a very physically active background, all of those things. And breakfast is very important in avoiding those events or are important for those events, if that makes sense. So I don't know. I think like the water points fair. I never drink enough water, but I think I don't know. I think it's important to set a tone in your morning, whether it's quick on the go or you're sitting down and giving yourself time. That event will set up what you're going to do. This is Melania from That's Food. That's Food is a CGSR produced podcast, and without the help and support that we get from CGSR, you would not be able to make That's Food. So right now is a super crucial time for CGSR. It's Fundrive, which is CGSR's annual fundraiser. Fundrive raises one third of CGSR's annual income. With these funds, we're able to produce great shows and podcasts like the one you're listening to right now. So is there anything else that you can get out of donating? Yes, not only do you feel good about helping local volunteer produce radio, we have tons of merch available, including the Friends of CGSR discount card. At $30, this discount card gives you discounts to more than 60 stores in Edmonton. Did I mention that you can also get a tax receipt if you donate more than $50? No? So you might be thinking, how do I donate? Great question. Call us at 780-492-2577, extension line zero, or donate online at cgsr.com. If you love listening to That's Food as much as we enjoy producing it, please consider donating. Thank you for your support. Every little bit counts. This wouldn't be a That's Food episode without a snack fact. Caitlin, go for it. Did you know that Ben and Jerry's cookie dough ice cream was launched in the 1980s and that the idea came from an anonymous note left by a customer? Cool. I didn't know that one. (laughs) I don't know about that. (laughs) And that's it for this episode of That's Food. For more information on Fundrive and to donate, go to www.cgsr.com. Today's episode was produced by the That's Food team. Our music is by Doug Hoyer. You can find all of our episodes on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and on our website, thatsfood.transistor.fm. You can contact us at thatsfood at cjsr.com. We are That's Food CJSR on Facebook and Instagram. That's Food is produced at CJSR in Edmonton on Treaty 6 territory. But is it food? That's That's food. food!